what is SQL or SQL? So it's a standard language for assessing and manipulating databases, as you can see, uh, it's structured query language. So what exactly do you use this for? We use it to query databases, retrieve, insert, uh, update record in a database. Also, you can delete from a database. You can delete record from a database. You can create new database. You can create new table. And you can create stop procedures and also create views. So, and as well, you can set permissions. So, okay. So, but today we're going to focus on this five ones, which is how to execute queries against database, retrieving, how do you insert record, how do you update record, and how can you delete record, which I think is most of the things that, uh, as a QA, you might be involved in. The other part, you might not be able, you might not use it. But, but the focus of this today lesson is going to focus on, is on these six, or oh, yeah, five, topics. So I actually will, will be using, I'll be using this particular site, which I think is good. So you can have a reference to go back to it, W3 school and introduction to SQL on W3 school. So that is the intro. Now, syntax. So database is, is where you store your record, you store everything that uh, you want to start on, on, so database, you know, it, it, it contains different tables actually. So it's basically like you have like your Excel sheet and everything that's contained different records, but it's another way to store uh, data into your database. So, and so, and also developers will query those database and then return that thing on your screen. So in most cases, when you search for things on the website, naturally it might come from database. So you need to know where it's stored, how to get those things out from database. So that um, different type of database that are used, maybe is MySQL, Oracle, MS SQL Server, depending on what exactly you are used. So. The SQL statement is very similar to all of them, so it, you don't you don't need to worry about too much about the database um, SQL that you want to use. So now this evening we're going to focus on this most important SQL command: select, update, delete, select into, and like I said, we are not going to f focus ourselves on the other ones, but uh, if time permits, I will quickly talk about these ones also. But focus will be on on these two. So on on these four these four commands. So let's go to the next one. Select the first. I think this is the most uh, used command in SQL. This is the most used command. So, and it, this is used for to select data from database. For instance, in this database right now, you have this um, customer table, and it's got your customer ID, customer name, customer um, contact name, address, and etc. So, and you can now ask, you can say, okay, I want customer name or customer contact. So what exactly do you do? You, the syntax you put is select the column, what the column that you are selecting you want to bring out. So column one, column two, column three, column four, as in different columns that you want to, you want to display from the, ta the name of the table. So which means that if I want to get customer name and contact name, I will say select contact and customer name, comma, contact name, then from what's the name of the table, customer. So 
as you can see, it says select customer uh, column name. So depending on column that you want. So however, in some cases, you don't care about the columns. You want to bring, uh, you want to return all the columns in that table. So in that regard, you use select star from table name. So that is going to bring all the tab all the columns in the in that particular table. So let's go through it using an example. So the first one, let's try try it yourself. So select star from customers. Let's run it and see what's going on. So as you can see, this is bringing now. I decided to say select only that. So, and that will bring only the customer name in that part, in that. So as you can see, that brings only customer name. So I would advise you as I'm going to also lay your hands upon this site so you can do, uh, it, we can do it together. So let's go back to Celesta also, which, which lists all the tables. So now let's say I want the column or customer ID with the name and also the address. So what I need to do is to now say select customer ID and I said I want the name, comma, name, then I want the address. So that's what you are. So uh, so if you are using yeah, different IDEs that you can use to query, right? Depending on ID that you use, you just need to know where to put your statements like this and where to click on run. That's what you need actually. So, but once you know what you're going to select as in the command that you're going to be uh, running and you just need to click on yeah, run. Most of them work on the same way, the same way that you, uh, whether you are going to be using different ID, but you just need to know the command that you're going to be executing. So let's go back. Okay. So that is that. So the next one, so we'll talk about the select now and also uh, I'll talk about the select star from so which sell, um, returns all the customers in that particular table, and this one return that specific um, columns from the customer table. So another one is distinct. Also, let's go th through this one again. So let's try this. Select country from customer. So as you can see, it lists all the countries in that particular table. But, but in most, in some cases, you don't want to list, list duplicates because in this, for it, let's say for instance, you are looking for in this particular table, you want to know how many countries or you want to know the country that are present. You want to know the country that are present in the custom, in customer table, or you want to know where the customers actually came from. So which country they reside in or something like that. So, but as you can see, this is, it's got Germany, yeah? it's got under Germany, it's got Mexico, it's got Mexico, and it's not unique. So, but that's not how, what you want. So in that regard, you want to use distinct, select distinct. So now the syntax is to say select distinct, then the column that you want to return. Uh, you might want to return more than one column, but if you have more than one column, it's going to select the distinct in all of them. So which means that we'll, we'll, tr we'll try that right now and see what we have. So for instance, uh, let's say in this one right now. So I, I don't want the columns or uh, the country to be repeated. So I can say select 
these things. So I want to distinct country. So as you can see now, uh, there will not be any duplicate country. So as you can see, the two magic codes that we've seen before are gone and also Germany is only one country. So, but let's go back again and try our Celesta to bring all the columns. So now, let's say we want to now select countries and cities. Let's do that. Let's bring city and country. Comma, country. So, and we run that. So, you can see there are duplicates of that and duplicates of that. So, and now, so in the first instance, we did only for countries. So, if I now pull this thing here, so it's going to be this thing. So, it's going to be removing duplicate of city and countries. So it's possible you will see duplicates of city and also you see duplicates of country, but you will never see duplicates of countries and city together, which means that you will not see Berlin, two Berlin and Germany together. It's possible you see more of um, more than one Germany because they're going to be in a different, also like Germany and Mayhem, so you couldn't see that. So you're going to see more of that. So for instance, if there's another Berlin and it's not in Germany or it's in Mexico, you're going to see that also. So that is the difference between that one. So let's run that and we see what we have. So yeah, you can see Germany, there's one Germany here. Yeah, there's another one also made that. So, and you can see different Brazil, but in different city. So even because even if you do that, so it's going to bring the same thing. Uh, it's going to bring distinct countries and cities. So both of them together. So, and yeah. okay. So yeah, that is that on on distance. So distance it's. Uh, it's used to remove duplicate values from the list of um, table that, or columns that you display. So let's go to the next one. Okay, uh, I'll talk about this. Okay, let's talk about this. No, no, I'll talk about this later. So let me leave this. I want to, yeah. Because I want to talk about how to use as, and also you can see this is kind of another, it's not using from table, but I will discuss about that one later. So. So now the next one is a where close clause. So as you can see before, we only have select columns, names, and also from. We did not put where. And in some cases, let's say in our situation now, so you want to say, oh, select country from customer, but you only want um, country on um, people living in maybe Mexico. So then that's where you use a where statement to ask or a where clause to uh, restrict your uh, returns of items to that particular where clause. So for instance, you can say where country is equal to uh, then Mexico.
so it can say it brings only one Mexico so and if you say maybe Brazil so it brings only only Brazil so that's how you can use your way to limit your uh, search or your re results so based on your where clause so so you can use it to extract that particular record that fulfills that condition in your web clause. So, and that, that's the syntax. The syntax is select, you can select any columns that you want uh, from that particular table where you put your web clause. So you can match them together. You can put all and and or something like that. So for instance, I can say all. Uh, country is equal to so I want either Brazil or Germany so as it, if I do something like that because you need to be careful it has to be the same way it is spelled in your database So as you can see now it's bringing that so it's either Germany or Brazil so I can do and that should return nothing because there's no country which is Brazil and also uh, and yeah so and Germany so but a better one is let's say Brazil now and you can say and CT is equal to some part of so when you run that it returns only that one so that's how to use the where clause so let's continue okay all right so I didn't actually so in the work clause you can use different operators actually so you can use operator equal to greater or less than you can use greater than for numbers so let's quickly uh, do a quick example so let's say that So now, let's say I need now where I can say uh, customer ID is greater than, or let's say, oh no, yeah, that's fine, greater than 10. So, so that brings that. Or if I say less than five, or I can also say less or equal to, so that's one. So then I can also find, uh, okay, let me remove that and use the like. So Let's say now you are looking for customers where their name starts with um, maybe let's say let's see which one is common. Okay, let's say Paul or Paulo, or you want to see anyone that their name start with P A U. So something like that, whether that is Paul or Paolo, you want you want to you want to get their names. So you want to select star. I, I don't care about any about the header or the columns, but I want where customer contact name like. So my like is going to be the. I want to start with P, oh, uh, no, 
let's say PO, PAU. Then I don't care about what comes next. So that is showing that there might be anything, there might be something before that. And I just want to have anyone that's got PAU in their letter. Doesn't matter where that letter appears. It might appear at the front or at the back, or but it's got PAU in that. So let's see what that returns for us. So you can see it returns all this power, power and everything. So that is that. So and so and also another way another thing that we could do is time of that let's go back again and you can let's see what the data is Okay, let's see this Maria. No, okay, let's see, let's let's look for the one that their names ends with E R. It's got ER in his name. I think maybe that might be good. So I want to get anyone that's got ER in their names. So where customer name like. So I want ER in their names. So this is kind of you using a work card actually to say this can mean any letter, but it has to, it can start with any letter, but after that there's ER, then after that there can be any letter or not any. So that's what you're looking for. So as you can see, all these ones have got ER in their name and there's been all these ones. So they've got ERs in their name. So, but let's see, let's look for the one that their names ends with ER. So for that, you just need to remove that. So what you are looking for is like, I don't care what starts that particular name, but it must end with ER. So if you run that, it's going to go only one with ER, as you can see. So, but if you're looking for the one that their name starts with ER, which I don't think, and you don't care what happens afterwards. So, which I don't think there's any like that. So, but let's say I'm looking for people, I'm looking for customers that are score, their name start with A. That's what I would do. Their name start with A. So, and yeah, so all this one, their name start with A. So that's how to use the worker. So as you can see, there's like and in, okay. So, and also between. So let's quickly use the between first. So now I want to get So I want to get on um, customers with ID from, uh, let's say five to uh, seven. So, and to do that, you can use between. So, and you can say where customer, between one and 
Tiff 517. Oh, sorry, I don't think that's the... Oh, sorry, there's where... So, as you can see, so that only brings five to seven where... So select star from customers where customer is starting from that. So that, that is that. So let's continue. So you could, you could try an in also. You could try that one also. So now let's continue next. So the next one is SQL and or not, I think I've, I've used that also, is basically if you want to uh, concatenate different conditions so so that if you want a if you want to match all the conditions together, so you want a, so that all the conditions are fulfilled, you use and. If you want at least one of them, one of the conditions should be fulfilled, you use or. So that's, that's, so you can separate them with and or, or. I'll, I've used that before when I use when Berlin or city, city is equal to that or that. So that's, that's how to use that. So, yeah. order by. So now let's go to the order by. So now the one that we've done here, select that. So we can order by, I think, yeah, by name. I think it's already ordered by name. Yeah, it's already ordered by name. You can, you can do less. It's order, order by, yeah, I think it's ordered by customer name. So let's try to order it by contact name. So you just need to say select that, select from then order by, so contact name. So that is now ordered by contact name. So um, by default is ascending. So but you can also sort it in descending. So that's in descending order. So or uh, you can order by, let's say order by city in the sending order. So that is ordered by city in the sending order. So that is that in terms of ordered by. So you can order by different, you know, also you can do two columns or more than one columns anyway. So in that order. So next. So another one is insert into. So also you can insert into the table. So the syntax is insert into the name of the table and the columns that you want to insert into. And then the next one is the value that you want to insert. So value one is going to be inserted into column one. Value two is going to be inserted in column two. Value three is going to be inserted into value three. So which means that if you specify three values here, you need to specify three columns. So you could as well not specify any columns. Then if you don't specify any columns, that assumes that you want to insert into all the columns in that particular table. So which means that in your value, you need to put value for all the um, columns in on the table. Uh, see, like, okay, like this one, as you can see, insert into table name. So then values, you need to specify all the values for that particular table. So let's try this now. So now let's first remove, let's first. Uh, 
Okay. Insights with the Okay. Let's first see what is on the table. First, as you can see, we're looking for cardinal and term as cardinal as customer customer names. So cardinal yeah, if it's there, it should be here, but it's not. So, and if we now insert into that table, so, so which means this is what we are doing. Insert into a customer, which is our uh, table name. And also we want to insert customer name, which is Gardena. Customer con uh, contact name is Tom, Tom B, and the Tom B Erickson. So then address is everything in here. And also city is this one. Postcode is this. You can see it is in code and also in single code. So country is Norway. So that's what you want to insert. So if you run the query, then it goes and it's inserted. So now let's say we do select from customer so let's see the one cardinal okay let's see what we inserted because it seems customer name should be Cardinal. Okay, that, there you go. That is it. So that's what we just inserted. So, and let's do this now. Select. There's one already. So what I'm trying to do is write the two queries together. One insert, then also display the customer. So now let's say I don't want to insert postcode. I can remove postcode and then I don't need this. So, so I'm inserting city and country only. So I can run my query. So I've got error message. It said there's error message in my statement. So that means there's some could not be paired. So it's possible that, yeah. So it's possible that that particular postcode is required. So that I cannot even insert without inserting postcode. So uh, hold on, let's do this. Yeah, okay, I think it's, it was because of the statement I added. So, and it said one row, it's not because of the postcode actually, so it's because of that statement I added. So now it said one row is affected, so let's go back and see what is being inserted. So let's do select star from customer. Customer. 
Oh, okay. Let's go as customers. So, then let's say let's order it. So the one that we enter was cardinal, yeah. So as you can see, is the cardinal. The other one we didn't put the postcode. So that is that. So that is that on insert. So and the same way you can insert the other one. So let's continue. this one so next so SQL now values so and this is where you can also put in your next condition so in your where condition to see if it's no or it's not no so as you can see there's one that we inserted before let's go back to this one so and I can say, please bring me where postcode is not because I know I just inserted one without postcode. So I can say where postcode is not. So I don't, I don't need to order. So you can see that brings that. So where it gets not in, in the postcode. So and you can as well also say it's not no so which is the opposite it's going to bring everyone except the one that is not no see so that is that so you can so so that is is possible to return your results based on whether there's a part a, a table or a column that is doesn't contain anything or it's not so that's that's what you use if, if there's a field that has got no value like for example what the, the display here so you can you can also select okay i want because it's possible let's say this is a good example let's say this is example in this table called person and this is the address and you want to return uh, only table where you know where people live so that would mean that what you need to say is like oh please select star from person where address is not no so that will return people with addresses or you want to say oh you want to clarify that oh is that any people or any person that hasn't got address in your database you can say okay yes yeah, select star from people where address is not so that one will return address not addresses for you so that is that for no and not no so update so now as we have inserted a a record so and we can as well update that particular record so and to do that the syntax is update the name of the table that you want to update then now you now need to say set that means okay which column do you want to set and what's the value of that particular column so and you're going to say okay i want to set um, column uh, let's say post um, postcode and what's the postcode you want to set another one so then also you need to put the where clause to see how would you find that particular record in your table. So if you don't put work clause, it's going to set everything in your table, in your, yeah, everything in your table. So be careful. So because that means if there's no work clause, everything is true. So it's, you're just going to set all your columns with the value. 
So it's very, very important you put a wear clause. So, and let's go through that again. So let's say now we want to update that. We want to update this one. Let's say where it's not. So we want to update the postcode. So we can call that insert. In, okay, I want to do update. Update. So postcode. Now update table. What's the name of the table? Customer. Customers set postcode no postal code postal code is a cutter. Then, so, and you want to put where? So there are two ways. Uh, I think I can say, oh, uh, where my customer ID is equal to 93. So it goes into the, So it said it's, uh, it's already affecting one. So if I run it again, it's only affecting one because it's going to uh, only see that. So now if I run that query before, so it's got nothing because it's already been updated now. So there's no record that's got no, and that's got a null postcode. So let's say I want to bring that out now. I can say where so I can bring that out by that clause. So where my customer ID is equal to 93. So that brings that for me and I can see my postcode is already updated as I want it. So that's how to do that. So that's the update, how to update your database. So you put your uh, co command, update command, name of the database, then you set. So let's say, uh, okay, let's set more than one round. So, so let's say update, set. I also want to maybe set the customer name also for that. So equal to so I also want to set the city is equal to okay let's see that so uh yeah as you can see i'm kind of using uh where i think if you if you see something that i'm actually um, doing in terms of our uh, case sensitive the SQL is so for in terms of the table name is case is not case sensitive so you can actually write your table name whether as lowercase or and also the same thing with even the command also I can I can write where in my in lowercase so it will still be fine well 
the only issue is like you need the data has to appear the same way it's written. So let's run that one. So it's affecting one. So if you now select star select star from customer so where the so as you can see so it's been updated and city is set to London and so that's it so that is the update so any so I think we've, we've done updates for multiple records so also so okay yeah yeah I think this another one also you can as well update I think what we've done is update multiple columns but you can also update multiple records like I said so for instance where CT is equal to So now let's assume I want to change Sao Paulo. So I don't I don't like this. I want to change that number. So I can say update. So update customer set. I want I don't I want to change that to normal A. So where C T is equal to So let's see that. Let's do that. So it affecting affected four records, so as you can see. So let's read again. So you can see all this now are uh, updated. So that is the update. So delete is also delete from the table name where that condition is met. So the same way you can do delete. So let's say I want to delete, um, yeah, anyone living in Sao Paulo. So I can only I can say delete from where city is equal to. Uh, let's see, let me delete only this one. So yeah, one record is deleted. So if I say select star from that where city issue return nothing. So but if I say now country is equal to Brazil. So that particular city should be gone. It's not here again. So that is how to delete. So you delete from that table and once that condition where you put on your where clause is met so it's going to delete from the table so that is that so and also you can delete from table so if you this one is dangerous so you you delete all the records anyway because there's no where clause in that so that it's very very <laughs> so you shouldn't do that so because if I say delete if I put that so all this table will be gone so you can you can also do that so that is, if you know what you are doing you want to delete everything from that table so you can do that so 
Yeah, there's another one we trunk it. I will see if you can get to that later. But let's if you want to delete our tables, so you should you can use that command. So top limit row number also. So this is another thing that you can you want to select the top number, let's say top hundred, top two hundred. So so yeah, in this one it's kind of a bit um, different. So if you are using my um, SQL Server, you your SQL statements is different. If you are using my SQL, your SQL statements is different. Oracle is different. So Oracle is got the same. Select column names from that. That is where you are. Where row number is less than that or equal to that. But in SQL Server, you just say select top number and where that is. So that's what you need to do. So that brings the number of so so that brings the number of uh, the number of columns that you specify to to you. So So let's try. So the same way, just select top three. That brings the top three. Let's try that. So that brings top three for you. So the same way also, if you say select only me three, that brings only three items, only three records rather for you. So yeah, so next one. So next one is minimum and maximum function. So you can you can get the minimum of maximum function. So the center is select minimum of that particular column. So from the table where the clause is. So in that particular columns, you want to select the minimum value or you want to select the maximum value. So let's say in this one now, you want to select which product is got the minimum uh, ID. So it's going to select one, two, three, those three. Or you want to, in a normal scenario, maybe price, which um, product is the most expensive, so, and then which is the, the one with the maximum price. So you want to say, okay, please get the price, the most expensive price. Uh, or most expensive products. So you want to say maximum select man, max of that one of, of price. So let's try that now. So cheapest, so this is the cheapest product. So select minimum of price. So I think I said I will come back to this, So, but I will do it right now. So this is what you want to do. From product, I want to select the minimum of the price. So which is the product uh, so which will give you the cheapest product. So this is only bringing the price. So I can say comma star. No, hold on. So, so as you can see, product 32, 33, Gettos and everything is the one that's got the cheapest price. So the cheapest price is that. So the same way you can also do for maximum. So, and this time around, I can say I want the product ID and the product name. So, and that's what you have. So this max is displaying as max, but you can as well, so make the ed editing to be meaningful. So if you want to do that, you use the alias. So alias as, um, let's say cheapest. So that is replaced with cheapest. 
So the same way also you can say you can change this one also as product. You can also ask as a name of product. So you can do the So you can change that to product cheaper. So using the alias for that. So that's how to do that. So let's go to the next one. So I think I've that I've done the one for the max. Okay, yeah, that's for the. So I think this is the, it's not the cheapest, it's the, let's say, most expensive. Yeah, no, it's not. So, okay. Next. Okay, the next one is count, average, and sum. So you can actually get the number of the rows that is displayed, and also you can also find the average of a particular column or sum up a particular column together. So, so that is also possible. So to select the count, you just need to select count of that particular column, how many, um, with how many results, or you just want to see how many num number of rows that that particular column has got. It's going to display that from a table and with conditions. So, and also you can do the average the same way, select AVG for that particular column from table, then with conditions. So let's assume, let's go through this now. Let's say we are uh, a good example is on in terms of count. So let's assume we want to count product that has got C as okay, okay, maybe chef. Has got chef starting. So let's go through that. So I'm looking for the one with chef. So select star from product where product name. So I think we we try that method before, which is like to get the white card. So but the one that starts with chef. So, but in this case now, we want to find the count. So, we want to find how many, we just put count. So, in product ID. So, we can put as count of products. So, that, that brings to that stuff. So, and let's go back again.
so to get the sum so let's say we want to sum all the prices together so we can also use the let's say sum price So that, those are the total price. But let's say we want to say where price is less than 20. So those are the ones that's less than 20. So the same way also average of the price. Average of the price where price is less than 20, that's 13. But if you remove, we don't want to limit it at all. What's the average of the all, all, all price, all the prices? 28. So that is that in terms of average, count, and so on. So we've used the like also for the, that is fine. So we can read that. Okay, the other ones that, yeah, I think we'll, we'll use this also. Like, if you have A um, percentage, find any starting with A. So if you have the percentage A, find any that ends with A. So if you have all in the middle, so you want to find any um, record that's got all in any position, the same way which we want to have that so it has to start with that so i think we will we'll just start before so let's continue So and what this white card? Yeah, I think we it's the same thing with this one also. So okay, let's continue. So so you use the white card with the like anyway. So I think it's the same thing like that. So in okay. So now. So in allows you to specify multiple value in your where clause. So so let's see how that is possible. So how do you do that? You select select your columns. You can select different columns actually from your table name where columns name in that. So okay, let's go through uh The price one. Okay, we can use this. So select star from, yeah, from customer where country is Brazil. Let's say we want to find, uh, now, want to find uh, customer living in Brazil, Germany, and Spain. So I think you can say customer is equal to that or and you can do something like that. Oh, spin. Is it spin? So, yeah. So that brings spin, Brazil, and Germany for you. So, but however, you could also use the in, so which is like you put your uh, values in that in. So like so, where's that? Okay, instead of that, uh, you can say country in. So you put that I think uh, in. Some
so that is the same way actually so let's say we remove this pane so that's it so you can actually say okay I want all customer where country is that means all customer living in country Brazil and Germany so that is that so that's how to use the in in that okay, I think uh, so also you can say not in so the same way also you can say not so that's the opposite so it's, it's not going to bring any customer living in Brazil or in Germany so what else So we'll use the between, so before now, so between, uh, I think we use the between products five to seven and that brings that for you. We'll use the, yeah, I thought I'll come back to this later, but I've already done that aliases. So if you want to change that column name to a different name, you can use as. So the same way also, you can also use the table. So we use this later, so yeah, as, as we go. Joins, though, this is a big one. So I will take time here to, to actually tell you this. So now, join. So you can join more than one table together. You can join two or more table tables together based on the relationship, based on the conditions, so, and, and this is so common because in some cases you can have a table storing customer and another table is storing the price and you want to know another table also is storing order and you want to know the price that a customer pays for a product. So for that, <laughs> the customer's detail is stored in a different table, the order is stored in a different table and then other thing is to, so you want to put the, everything together so this is where it become so it, this uh it's become interesting how this works so now let's go to to it together so uh, let's look at this sample first so then we look at our own example Okay, so select order. Okay, I'll need to talk about this also. So this is order from normally, okay, let's go through this before I'll tell you this. So I think we use one approach before now. Okay, so we're used to this particular table as of now. So let's start from that. So for instance, you want to say select star. So I can say select as as we've seen before, columns name. So I want to bring different columns. I want to address. So I want to bring this, all, all this, I want to display all these columns. So, so now uh, I will use alias, right? So you can do something like that. So because we are going to be using two, um, more than, yeah, more than one uh, table. So we are going to be using more than, one, more than one table. So that means you need to be putting the alias for that particular table into the columns. So, so to say that you want to, you need to tell uh, the computer where this particular customer is stored. Sometimes you might want to say it like that, customer, because it's possible that in customer, this this particular column can appear in two in more than one table. So you want to say, oh, please, this 
um, this customer name resides inside customer table and you want to do same thing also you want to say the customer the contact name reside inside customer and the same thing for the address but because we are using one table it doesn't matter but as you can see i can do that another way to also do is to use alias and say as maybe cost so that will mean that you can say i've already called my customer cost so it's no longer it's, it's no longer customer again so i can change those ones to cost so then when i run it then it's fine so that's my alias now so some people will just put let's say c so that it will be customer for c and you can do that also you can say c dot that so as you can see so but we are using one table here so we're going to now go back to where we are in terms of joins so we're going to use more than one table so now so we want to select order and this we want to select other id and the other id is stored in the table called order and also we want to select customer name and that customer is stored inside a table called customer and also we want to select other date which is in order others so let's quickly see what each of this table has got select star from so this is the content of that order so let's see what is in customers I think is the one that we've been using before okay so as you can see customer's name is there and then customer orders are here and everything so basically you want to say which customer customer id customer id is there and customer id is also here so this customer order these items so it's got other id of 10 two four eight and this is the employee id maybe the employee that serves that particular customer and this is the shipping id and this is the other date but the customer is customer 19. so then you need to now say which the name of that customer what's the name of that customer you need to go to customer table and search for customer 90 which is this guy so but if you want to do it manually this is what you want to do okay which customer order uh one ten two four three two four eight rather that one okay what's the name of the customer 90 okay let me go to the customer id customer table 90 and that's the name but it's quicker in sql what you just need to do is okay please give me customer id in order uh, on, sorry give me other id in table orders and give me customer name in customer table and also order date in order table and yeah from orders but i know i'm going to be using two tables now join that table with another table in a join i'm going to explain what's in a join after join later so but join them with customers so customers table join other table with customers table so if you join them but what's the condition and as you can see manually when i was doing it i was using the customer id to know that my customer is 90 and i go to the uh, customer table and i say where's the customer table 90 and i put that so what that means is that i'm going to be joining them based on customer id which is um, in both table 
So other table has got customer ID. Then customers also has got customer ID, both of them together. So that's the condition. I'm going to join the two tables together. And that is what's going to happen. Let's try that. So as you can see, so this customer 248, and this is the name of that customer, and this is the other ID. That basically, and if, and if you run it, that 249, 10249, 10249 is um, customer 81. Um, what which customer 81 is this guy? So let's work our code return 81. That's it, and that's it. So even if you can say, okay, let me also bring, which is tautology, I can also say bring customer ID into the fold. So that brings the customer ID for that particular customer. So even if you do other ID together, because it's the same ID anyway, just to be sure that. So as you can see, no customer other What did I do? Customer, customer ID, customer ID. All right, that's it. Yes. So, yeah, as you can see, initially it's not returning because it's the same ID anyway. But as you can see, it's the same. It's bringing that. So, that is what you are using to match them together. Say, so, okay, customer ID 90 and also custom on uh, order in the custom on uh, customer ID in the other 90. And that is going to uh, link them together and it brings that for you. So, that is. So, how to join two tables together. So now there are different type of joins. So this is another interview question they often ask that. So you have inner join. So that returns the matching value in both table as you can see that if from here 90 and 90 so because this is let me make the customer That's customer and that's order. So in the customer table, the customer ID 90, and uh, which one is the matching one in the customer, in the other ID is 90. So those are the matching ones. So he is going to use that. And that is the inner join. The inner join returns the matching value in both tables. So which means that if you go here, so 81 here, yeah. what, which one is the matching one in the other one? 81, yeah. So, and it returns that for you, and that's it. So that is that, is the, it returns the matching uh, record. The next one is the left outer join, left outer join. That one is easy. So the inner join is like, in mathematics, what you call interceptions. So it's basically look at, or oh, 80 is common in both table one and table two, like customer ID and also customer uh, other ID. So 80 is common, it returns that particular data with that 80 and that's it. So it returns the one that's common. In the left join, I think that's what um, is called XOR, XOR, isn't it, or something like that. So it returns everything in table one with the matching um, record in table two. So everything in table one with matching record in table two. 
So that is the left turn. So it is the left part. The table in the left part it returns everything that the table. And with the match record in the right table, the opposite is the right join. So it returns every record in the right table and the match record in the left table. So in other way to actually say this is like return everything in table one with exceptions of those one that has got a null value in table two. So let's let's see how this works. So and with, uh, because of time, I won't go to inner, inner join again because we will use inner join as a sample. Let's go to left join. So in this uh, demo, so in this one right now, so let's go through it. So as you can see, so this has got a customer table. This is a customer table and the selection from the other table. So now if you do, so we want to select all customer and any order that they might have and any order that they might have. So you want to select all customers. So which means that what is going to happen is like your customer table will be at the left hand side. So left will mean that the one that is on your from and the right is the one that you are joining with. So you want to select all customers. So which is if you look back to our join. So which means that from this table you want to have all customers and the matching order so which is left join for you so and that is what you're going to do select yeah this is just the columns that you want to select from your left um, table which is customer and you want to join it left join with the order so but you know that your uh, relationship between those two is customer ID. So that's what you want to do. So that is going to bring all customers and their orders for you. As you can see, some customers has not got any order at all, but that's what's going to happen. So it's got all the customers, every customer and their order. So in the other table, you won't actually see this customer in the other table. Let's look at that in the other table. So let's pull the customer ID also here. Let's pull the customer, let's pull the customer ID. So as you can see, so in the other ID, this um, customer is not does, is not present. But however, because we are looking for all customers, you can see that if you scroll up this table, this part is going to have details. It's going to have record in everything. So you can see. But the second part, there will be some items that haven't got any value at all. So for instance, this particular customer hasn't got any value. So that's why we return the null value. So there's no corresponding customer ID one in the other ID. So that's, that's what the left join, uh, left join will do for you. Get all the items in the left columns, which is one in the front and also in the other. So the only one that got the matching with the, all the matching ones. So it's going to return them. But the one that has not got anything is going to return it as a null. 
So, and the other one's going to be there. So, that is that. The other part, which is the right joint, is the opposite one. So, which you're going to use. So, this is like, okay, get everything in the right um, one with the matching one in the left in the left table. So let's see this example. So now the following will return all employees and any other they might have placed. So now you want to return all employees. So if you're talking about all employees, right? And the other they they might have placed. If you want to use right join the all employees will be at the right. Uh, if you want to use the left joint, the all employees will be at, the, at, at this side. Or if you are using the right joint, the all employees will be at the right hand side. So, which means that it's going to return every employee and the order. So, you're going to have some employee without any order. So, that's exactly. I think it is the same question, but. Now you are using uh, different methods to get them out. So let's try that also. So you can see. So let me bring the other ID also. So as you can see, the relationship between both of them is that. So let's see. Uh, or the so as you can see, so it lists everything on the employee employee uh, table. So let's quickly go to employees table and see what we have in the employees table. So this is our other table. Let's use this for employees. So this is the employees table and it's got only 10 records. So all the tens will be displayed from here. All the 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You see? Are they 8 or 10? No minutes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. To employees, yeah, everything on the employees has got an ID. Where's the employees? So we have these employees one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So which one is missing? Let's see why they're missing. Oh okay. I think they are they are more than that, sorry. Uh so yeah, okay. So yeah, so they are more than that. So they are more than that. So yeah, so all, every, you can see, so every employee, employee will be listed here, but not every other will be listed. So you're going to have all the employee with their other ID, whether it's got anything the other ID or not, is going to be displayed. So 10, it's got nothing. So it's going to be blank. Five is got something. So it's going to go on and on and on like that. So what's going to happen? Let's go through it one after the other and see what exactly is doing. So, 
So employee one, employee ID one, it's going to go to employee ID one and say, has you got any thing in the other ID? If it's got employee ID one, yeah, it's got something. It's going to display that. So, and it's got another one. It's going to display that. It's got another one. It's going to display. So it's going to display all, everyone like that. So the same thing, you go to two, and you're going to display that. The one that's got no, let's see what happens. So 10, employee 10. So employee ID 10, so which is West, employee ID 10. So let's see if you have any other for employee ID 10. So boom, there's nothing for that. So that's why you can see is list is employee ID 10 is displayed but it's got no other employee ID. So that's what is going to happen. So the left and the left join will return every uh, record in the table in the left hand side with the matching one in the right hand side. So even if, so the one that has got nothing will, will just be not. That's basically how, how it works. So I hope that is fine. So full join, this is what they call Cartesian's uh, in in mathematics, isn't it? Cartesian graph or Cartesian's uh, bar chart. So it just mix everything together. You shouldn't do that anyway. So it's basically it's often used when there's no relationship between the two tables. So you just bring them together and it becomes like a matrix. So. So a good example is that you just bring them together. So full, so this selects all customers and all orders. So all customers and all orders. So, so I think, yeah, in this case right now, it's going to like match them together. So basically, so every customer is going to be displayed with Okay, one minute. Let, let me say that one again. So, which means that in this situation right now, it's going to go and get all the customer uh, with a matching order and all order with a matching customer. So, you're going to have on both sides, there will be some that are blank, some that are also blank in other sides. So, which means that in the other ID, in the other part, there will be some blanks for customers, there will be some blank for for others. So let's see how that works. So okay, customer and other. I think we got that before. Okay, so like for instance, we no, I want to. Okay, this is our order table. I think I've. Our customers. So this is our customers table. So if we do the full join, Yes, do the free join. Okay, if it's an error, to be honest. Yeah, so. Specified error. Uh, 
Okay. So, yeah, for in normal cases, you can say this is what you're expecting anyway. The customer, in some cases, you have all the customers displayed and with their corresponding order and even all, all, also order also with their corresponding customer. So in some cases, you will have order without customers and you have customers without orders. So that's what you're expecting. So send note that we return all the rows in the left and also all the rows in the right. If there are any, if there are matching ones, you will also return the matching ones. So, so this is basically like you are combining the left joint and right joint together. That's what you are, you are getting. So in the, in this situation. So, yeah, okay. Union is what I was talking about to you before. Is a uh, is a Cartesian one that you just bring the union of those together. So, which I think. So, uh, with the time that I have, I'll just go to group by, which I think is another one that is very very important. So, when you are using uh, count, maximum, minimum, and average, sometimes you want to group your uh, columns into by conditions or something like that. So a good example, let's let's look at this. A good example is you want to list number of customers in each country. So in this situation right now, let's go to our no, customers. Let's start. Okay. So customers and by countries. So for instance, if you say I want to count, so I want to count um, country. So I want to count country, then as country. Count. So 92. But that's not what you are looking for, to be honest. You want to have how many people are living in Brazil, how many people are living. So let's say, and I'll say country. Come on. So that is showing Norway and the count is 92, which is not, to be honest. So you, you want to group them from that. You want to say group by country and you can see now so at that point you can now have that okay Argentina is three and Austria is two Brazil and Germany is three so based on that you can now see okay uh, how many people are living in that particular country so the same way also you can also do for your sums also if you want to group your sum together and you want to have uh, grouped sum or grouped average based on your group by clause. So you can also do that. So a sample is one I've done for you right now. So you want to say or select count from that customer ID, which is how many customers live in that particular country. So and that is an example of that. So yeah, you can also use a join or that that's okay, just combine it out with that. So having so having also is another uh, clause that you use with a group. You don't use having without having a group but so having is added to SQL because the word could not be used in aggregate function. So grouping, grouping is basically an aggregate function because you are aggregating your columns. You are aggregating your columns. So, and also like you say counts or sums, they are also aggregating. So in that regard, so you want to now use your having as a condition for your group by. So in this case right now, you say select the count for the country so, but I don't want all the country to be aggregated. I want country which customer ID is greater than five. So you cannot use your where clause for that particular purpose. You have to put your um, condition in having. 
so in your having cost so where having counter so for instance now you want to say oh where the count of that particular um, uh, customer id is greater than five so you need to use um, uh, having for that particular purpose so then also you have assist when you can also use that also where the assist so assist operator is used to test the assistance of a record in a subquery so i think um with the time that i have right now i will not be able to um, fully cover subqueries so as you can see from where we are doing right now we are using it from table so also possible that you can pass a query inside the query. That's what you are saying. That's what they call a subquery. So in this situation, you can see I'm selecting supplier name from supplier. Where now exists means that where this supplier name now exists in this particular new table because this is going to return another table for you. And that table is showing that or select product name from product where product id is equal to supplier id and price is equal to 20 so this is going to return a set of items for you and then from this set of products that is going to return is going to now select uh, so where this exists that means where there's a product for this particular there's a product here so that's why it's uh, saying where this exists that means it's going to re it's not returning no for you it is true it's returning something this statement is true so this should normally return another list for you but if it doesn't then uh, it's going to return false to you so and also any or all so it's the same situation also so you can return you can say from where any so this is going to return list so as we have in uh, I, I think we we are we use in before where that in so for or this one now you can use a sub query so this is um yeah i i don't have, i think i only have 10 minutes for maybe that yeah so i will leave that for now so I think that is that for now. So any question? So we've been able to cover uh yeah all these intro syntax where so and yeah most importantly is insert from insert your select statement, your join, those are very important, your like that's important one thing I want to cover also here is SQL injection SQL injection so so in most cases when you it's another thing that you want to actually talk about even in a what is it called in an interview so when you are writing your SQL right let's say this is your SQL now select star from user where user id is equal to this or that that that's one so in most cases you can also people can want to cheat your system so and this is a form on your system you see we're not talking about SQL here we're talking about another way another thing that people do that as a tester you want to be careful and even when you want, you want to run your system your when you're doing manual testing is a good thing to also use so let's say you have your form login form login do and password that so normally at the back end this will could happen so it's going to go to to create something like this this sql statement select star from user where name is equal to jodo and password is equal to my password so if it returns something to you and you're going to say yeah it's passed okay like exactly that it's done here so if you return something it's going to say oh cool then you can continue working on that system or on that application but if it doesn't return maybe the password is wrong it's going to display error message to you but now 
a, an actor can look into your system and put something like that. Or, so, or, user, or, that is equal to that. So, that is basically cheating the SQL. So, it's cheating, cheating it. Why? Because then your result is going to be something like this. Because, as you say, name is equal to Jodo. But in this case, this guy did not put Jodo. He put that. Name is equal to that. So, basically, what you are seeing now is going to say name is equal to nothing or this is equal to this and more often and not every time this will be true this will be true because this is equal to this and because you're using an or so this statement will be true this statement will be true and also it's doing the same thing with the this and that's joining them together and it's now say password so instead of putting my pass, it's putting this right now. So which now, if you concatenate it with your uh, statement, and you're having this, and you're saying that pass is equal to what the guy has put in, it's equal to this. So what that means is like my pass is equal to nothing, or nothing is equal to nothing. So which means that this statement also this it will be true because this this part is true and also because this part is true and also the, this part is true the uh aka will have access to your system so that would mean that in most cases a developer need to be careful to that something like this is not allowed in your username and password that people cannot put something like this in your username on your password but because if they do then they can have access to your system another one that's so deadly is that they can also put like a statement like this so because what you are going to do is you're going to say select star from so 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 like like this right so you're going to say select that 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 and they, they can put a semicolon at the end and put a semicolon here and then put drop table if they know the table so something like this so they will execute the normal statement and then put a semicolon and now say drop table so what's going to happen the normal uh, query will be executed and the drop table also will be executed if yeah, let's say this table is user so that means it's going to drop your user uh, table and then that can be catastrophic so that is one thing that we need to consider I just need to talk about that so yeah it is using yeah other SQL server or MySQL so yeah it's the same thing yeah so yeah that is everything for for today any questions so next week we're going to talk about API so and that is today with SQL. Any question?